All right, what silly thing did I buy? I spent $10 on a silly thing. <laughs> it says it's a, a frequency doubler. Um, and it has input, output, and RF monitor. And then it has no way to add power. So is it labeled wrong? Is this actually a power pin? Uh, I, I don't know. I think, uh, I think we need to peek inside. It um, is marked with a bad connector also. All right. It says a connector damage. And obviously the, um, the center pin has been opened up. So um, needs to have that replaced. But let's take the top off. Any guesses what's inside? Ooh, RF magic. Lots of RF magic. Um, yeah, I think it's something to point with. So, uh, this is the, which one's the input? Uh, RF monitor. So this is the input and this is the output. So the input comes through a capacitor. So we got, we got uh, Illumina PC boards, PC boards, PC, you know, ceramic boards with with gold traces, that's pretty cool. So it comes through this capacitor, it comes into here. There looks to be maybe a resistor here loaded to a capacitor off to the side. This is just some kind of matching. And then it comes through these two stubs here. Again, matching, there's a whole bunch of little squares that I guess you can short out. And then it's got this silver epoxy that you put the, the, the ceramic plates down to and because there's a ground contact on the bottom. And then it's that, that conductive goo that's also used to do the matching. So they just kind of dab it on there and dab, 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 dab until their VNA or whatever makes it look good. <laughs> and then it goes through two devices. There's a device here and a device here and they're very odd looking. And then it goes through a filter. So some kind of filter here that probably picks off the second harmonic, right? This coming in here probably whacks into these things and turns it into a square wave. Okay, so probably sine wave comes in, this squares it off, and then you generate a second harmonic. And then this filter gets rid of the first fundamental and only lets the harmonic go through and that goes on its merry way. Now, indeed, this is an RF monitor. There's a coupler here, uh, a coupler with uh, some little weird little diode here and a capacitor to ground and a resistor to ground. Pretty classy, classic stuff picking off the, um, uh, the um, oh, what do you call it? Shoot, can't come up with words today. Anyway, it does it demodulate. It demodulates the signal and turns into a, 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 a DC signal here, giving you the amount of power coming through this thing. So yeah, there you go. There's also some, also some weird conductive silver epoxy blobbed on here to try to match that as well. So it looks kind of ugly. Obviously hand tweaked. We'll have to get this under the microscope, but um, I'm going to take this back plate off here, this right right angle adapter. <laughs> um, obviously, this was bolted into some rocket or something. I don't know what what it came out of. Comment below if you know where it came out of. It's the avionics, something like that. Yeah, there we go. Get rid of that right angle adapter. That'll come in handy some for some other project. But yeah, there we go. Now we have a now we have a slabo slabo conductive material here. Um, yeah, let's uh, yeah, let's put this under the microscope. Pretty strange. Okay, we're under the microscope here. Here's the uh, input connector. It goes through a. Uh, 
It goes through a capacitor right there, strip line construction. There's a ground plane on the bottom. And then this is, I believe, a resistor. And then there's an adductor and a capacitor. That's what these guys are here. And then it's got some stubs, some quarter wave stubs to match this thing for a particular frequency. Um, so you uh, put all the power into that thing there. And most likely that's a diode. I don't know. Maybe a diode. Maybe maybe there's two diodes. I don't know. I don't know what these things are. <laughs> I'm not good at this stuff. So comment below. What is that device and what is that device? Now I know what it's trying to do. It's trying to make a square wave. It's trying to take the input and make square edges. So these are like tunnel diode or avalanche diode or I think some magic here. <laughs> and then uh, that might just be a capacitor. I don't know. Anyway, then it goes into this filter. So this is a very typical filter. And this would be uh, uh, just pulling off the, uh, uh, eliminating the fundamental, letting the, the harmonic go through. And the harmonic will go through and that'll be double the frequency and it'll go out. And then on its way out, it sees this circuit over here, uh, which is a uh, coupler. I've gone over that before. So there's uh, coupling between these two parallel traces here and uh, so it sets up the current here and it goes through this diode, gets rectified. And uh, so it will be um, uh, taking the signal here and taking the peaks. It's like a peak detector, throwing it on this pad here, which has a capacitor to ground. So the peaks will be, will be caught and held here um, as the peak power. And then there's a little resistor here that bleeds it down. So when you, there's no power, it'll go to it'll go to zero, and then when you have power running, it will follow it. Okay, and so so you need to pick that capacity that, that resistor wisely. So it has the frequency or the uh, you know time response that you need, and then it just goes out to a pin. They just use a little thing here. It goes out to the monitor pin. So yeah, this just detects the amount of uh, amount of amplitude that you have. And uh, yeah, isn't this thing ugly? Like I said, these things here, so there's uh, this silver epoxy that the thing is attached to the base with, right? This this um, uh, uh, substrate. And they they use that to, like th this side and this side are gonna look the same. There's gonna be three squares here and there's three squares here. They kind of glob it on here. So you have a big blob of capacitance here. And then they they hear that they they make this side a little bit longer, and they make these two sides a little bit longer. Um, and then I don't know what went on here. I don't know why they put a big blob there. That one makes no sense to me. But I don't know this stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that adds. A, I don't know. Seems very odd. That one does. The other ones make sense, but that one seems odd. Anyway. When you when you thought that there's voodoo magic in RF land, I think this one qualifies. Yeah, uh, pretty 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 strange. Uh, and then let me show you the damage to the uh, damage to the pin there. Let's see here. Can I go up here enough? Yeah, it's just it's uh, it should be a it should be a nice little thing there with metal inside. And it's just all blown out and damaged. So yeah, the connector, the connector's damaged. It says so right there, connector damage. With even four X's on it, not one X, but four X's just to make sure. Four gigahertz? Okay, well, I don't know if this thing works or not. Okay, I wanted to measure this thing and see if it works, um, or maybe the diode's blown out or whatever, but um, what I found was I was using um, a couple items. First of all, I needed an input and an output that were separate, all right? And the output could go, you know, this is four megahertz, it's four gigahertz, so I figured I would use my, uh, my new uh, tiny uh, 407 
which goes to seven gigahertz. So I hooked that up and then I inputted uh, signals from the tracking generator of my uh, uh, signal, which can go to three gigahertz. So um, yeah, it's, uh, the Siglent seem to have square wave outputs. It seems to have a lot of harmonic content on the tracking generator, which kind of surprised me. Um, and so I found that I could sort of get it to double around 1.6 gigahertz. It's, uh, it's, it would double it up to 3.2. It probably is designed for a different frequency, but it seemed to work there. And I just wanted to have something to show, right? Say, look, it does double and it, it has no moving parts, right? it has no, no electrical connections. Um, so what I did was I found this filter, which is a 1.57 gigahertz um, uh, saw filter. And so I put this on the tracking generator, set it to 1.57, and then there'll be no secondary harmonics. This will have a clean, a clean signal. And then I could, then I could show it's, it's actually is doubled. So uh, here's a couple screen captures uh, with the, here is the raw, that, that's just the, um, the 1.57 signal input. That's, 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 the, that's what the generator's outputting. And then uh, the second, image here you can see that we're we're getting bleed through of the harmonic plus we're getting the double so it, it does prove that it's doubling there is a lot of feed through from the for the the uh, first frequency uh, and i i don't know if that's because i'm not using the correct i i don't know what the spec is on this thing so i don't know exactly what's what to use but anyway it did show that it's doing something okay um now uh i had filmed that and i was getting ready to edit it and then uh, something happened and I got something in the mail. And that was that I received this thing, okay? <laughs> so I figured, well, it's on the bench right now. I just, I just filmed a video on, on this thing. Um, it goes up to two gigahertz, so at least we can, we, can, we can sweep the frequency and take a look at the output. So I think I'm gonna hook everything back up. First of all, I'm going to test the spectral purity of this and make sure there's no second harmonic, okay? So that is the first, that is the first thing to do. So let's, let's do that. All right, so we have the spectrum analyzer and we have the tracking generator. Let's turn on the RF. And we are getting a second harmonic, but it is one, two, three, uh, 35, 36 dB down. Okay, the specification for this machine, I think is 30 dB um, harmonic suppression. Uh, let's go ahead and move it up to, um, Let's see, that will go to 3.2. So let's set this to one and a half frequency, 1500 megahertz. And yeah, it's real clean of it. It's real clean over there. There's no harmonic at all there. Uh, let's set it to uh, 500 megahertz. And yeah, there's a tiny little, tiny little spur down there. One, two, three, four, that's 40 dB down. So this is much, this is a much better uh, sine wave. Um, this was sold originally as a low budget unit. I think you could buy the basic box for $7,500. And then you needed to uh, add all those other things like the pulse, pulse modulation was another thousand dollars. And, but anyway, probably for around $10,000, you got this in the mat, in the cost of test equipment, that's pretty low. Um, and, uh, this, supposedly from online comments that I've read, it doesn't have the greatest phase noise, but it's super reliable and easy to use. And um, anyway, it's great, I think, for the garage, okay? So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use this as the source and we'll run it through the doubler and then take a look at it on uh, the spectrum analyzer. We, we, that one can go up to 3.2. So we'll, we'll, we'll use the Siglent for a while and then we'll move over to the Tiny SA if we need to go higher. Um, I'm a little bit worried about the Tiny SA ultra mode because there are spurs and stuff, but uh, let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and do this one. Okay, so I have the, um, I have the doubler in, in, in circuit now, input output, and I uh, have, um, uh, 1500 megahertz coming in and there is it's double and it's bigger it's about 10 db bigger so i think that's pretty good let me um let me go over to frequency 
And let's see if we can't move this over a bit. See, it's not working there, and it's working there. So this is uh, 1.4 gigs. This is 1.5 gigs. 1.6 gigs is working really, really good. It's really high there now. So we need to switch spectrum analyzers, and uh, we will we will do that. So let me get the tiny SA out. All right. So I have the uh, uh, tiny SA set for start of one gigahertz a stop of six gigahertz okay and so here's our 1.5 coming in and there's our second harmonic uh let's move this thing up to um let's move it up to 2000 let's see how two gigahertz works and two gigahertz is giving us a nice big signal at uh four gigahertz very good so uh it does it does multiply from four to uh i mean from two to four just fine and uh it is about yeah that's about 15 db of change from the from the suppressed carrier to the uh to the output of the um, second harmonic so yeah it is doing what it's supposed to do and uh I don't know what it's, like I said, I don't know what it's true design frequency is. We could probably try to measure all of the uh, mechanical dimensions of the band or the low pass filter um, that's in the, um, that's in the uh, frequency doubler and try to reverse engineer it. But I'm too lazy right now. I just wanted to show that you can double frequencies with no power, just using some type of diode. And again, comment below if it's a uh, what type of what type of diode it is, right? 